Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Daily Combat Podcast. This is Hollywood Matt Connolly with the Double Biceps Cities and the Contract on Legal Requirement. Every single time we appear on camera, the man to my left and to your right, the co-founder, co-pilot, co-breather of air in this very room, co-wearer of clothes. It is the master of disaster, the king of sting, the count of Monte Cristo. It is Thunderlips, the ultimate male. It is, in fact, the winner of the Dave Stockbridge of the Year Award. And there it is there, the illustrious award held by the illustrious man with the illustrious beard. It is none other than your friend and mine, Dave, Dave Stockbridge. Stockbridge, welcome to your own show. So we're friends now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Matt Connolly, what a very, very warm introduction as always. And we do have ourselves a very, very special guest. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is Sebastian Tomesi. Sebastian, thanks so much for joining us on the podcast once again. Hello, everyone. Uh, now, for those people that aren't quite familiar with Sebastian's career, you can, of course, check out our previous podcast with Sebastian, where he'll outline his journey from judo to the Sambo mats, and he's now dominating right across the region and across the world, and has just more recently come back from uh, the Asian and Oceania champion, Championship uh, for Combat Sambo uh, in Kazakhstan, from what I understand. Is that right? Yeah, it's correct. Kazakhstan, Astana was the city, yeah. Oh, beautiful! The capital. Yeah. I just want one yeah. of those. I just want one of those plates of meat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, we did. Uh, Sava was kind enough to send through uh, uh, some some pictures and some uh, some video of the event, and it seemed strange to me that he concentrated less on your performance and more on the huge platters of meat that were being brought out by the army of waiters that they seemingly have there in Kazakhstan. There seemed more waiters and platters of meat than people. <laughs> Um, they were in step and, as well. They were like coordinated. Yeah, <laughs> it was a whole it, march. It, it, it <laughs> seemed like you can see there's been significant investment in these events. You know, the it, it, there was a, a a beautiful opening ceremony, and there was dancing, and there was uh, there, there was a, a, a singing. There was performance was art. It, was a guy fighting a bear. I didn't see that one, oh, I although I, I think that was part of the after party. Oh, right, that, yeah. that might have been where you're going to confuse it. Uh, Sebastian, it, 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 these guys, not only are they taking it seriously, but they're really, you know, um, uh, glorifying the sport. I mean, they're putting it on a whole whole new level over there, aren't they? Yeah, it's a big sport over there. So it, it was very, very well organized. It was great. Even location, everything was um, professionally set up and, and organized. So it was, uh, it was a great show. It was a great, and, uh, great day. And and how how did you go on on this occasion? Um, I got silver at the combat sport. Um, Congratulations! Thank you. Um, with the yeah. final bit, I thought I was even better, so I kind of should have. I feel like I should have pulled over the the gold, but um, I'm still happy with um silver. I it was a it was a big competition, so um. Did it go down to points right, in, yeah. the, in the final? Was it a, a it, it did go down to points. It was a bit of a tactical error, I suppose. I threw him and they gave him the score instead of me. So there was a bit of, um. Uh, I thought it was my score, but he initiated the throw, so he got it. Or then they said it was started outside, so I didn't get the score. So it was a bit of a, <sighs> we'll be smarter with the next one. The, the point is I felt I was stronger and better than the opponent, even though I, I pulled silver. But, um, Next, next one. Mm. But it was a good how one. Many, how many? Uh, so this would have been a qualifier for the world championships. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yes, it was a big, big um, Asia and Oceania. So everyone from this area has, um competed. So it wasn't easy. It was. It was actually very difficult having multiple. It's similar to having multiple MMA fights in one day. Yeah. Okay, yep. they're, they're only one round. One round is five minutes, but you have multiple fights in one day, so it's mm. it's, uh, it's actually exhausting. And then you have the uh, they put the finals at the end, so you have the prelims. I think it started maybe around ten o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning, and then they have a long it finishes around one o'clock, and then the finals start around six o'clock, I think. So you have a huge gap in between. Mm. you like. Not stressing, but you're obviously nervous for the last fight. You're in the final. Are you going to take gold or not? You got to warm up. Also, I had to. Um, that was my part of. Uh, I had to weigh in for the next day, so I couldn't eat. So I wasn't eating for the because I had to weigh in for the next day as well. And um, yeah, it was a bit much, but um, is what it is. 
No, no meat for you. Um, <laughs> That'd be the worst. <laughs> you were cutting weight and they're bringing out trays of delicious meat in front of you. So. <laughs> the, uh, but, but I guess you, you're competing there in Kazakhstan and it was the, the Asian and Oceania. And in some sports, so like say soccer, for instance, that might be thought to not necessarily be the you know, the highest level of the sport. But we're really, you're talking about the region that does have the, the vast majority of the population, the Sambo population there, aren't you? You're talking about all of those uh, for those people that aren't familiar sambo is a a, 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 a competitive sambo is a modified uh, soviet martial art that was taught to the soldiers and so as a result it's those old soviet countries that have that, that have really strong sambo teams and it's really a part of the the culture there so Good australia from- Kazakhstan, Armenia, all, all of these um, kind of former Soviet <laughs> satellite states. Um, they're, um, uh, you know, they're, they're like the powerhouse countries here. And so this is really uh, Kazakhstan. I mean, that, that's right in the heart of all of that. Um, and uh, and so and amongst all of that competition, you, you were able to emerge right towards the top there. Yeah, there was a, because being like in the Asia and near Mongolia and all these very strong wrestling base, I think it was... Um, most of them were from wrestling base more than striking base. So wrestling was mainly the dominating part within the combat area. Mm. So, um, with my judo background, I, I was, uh, I was, uh, came out quite strong, I believe with the gi on. Mm. So it was, it was good. So tell us a little bit about your transition uh, from judo to sambo and how, how that's gone and, and perhaps some of the, I, I guess, technical proficiencies that you had to pick up in order to transition over to uh, sambo from, from judo. For, well, with the gi part, it, it wasn't – and the takedowns, that's, it's more for the rules I have to get used to and the reflexes, I suppose. Like you can go shoot for the legs – it's very good for the wrestlers. We're not that used to the last more than 10 years in judo. You can't touch the legs anymore. Mm. So yeah. that's a little bit of different stuff. On the ground, there's leg locks. So there is a little bit of a, a different thing, but technique-wise, is very similar. So mm. the, they don't have an advantage of, of that over me, I suppose. So that's good. It's just some ruling stuff I have to do still sharpen. Do not not step out of the mat if they push you out and some stuff like that. But um, transition yeah. wise, it wasn't dif- wasn't too difficult at all. Luckily, um, with my MMA background as well for striking, there was no issue. Actually, feel come quite comfortable striking with them because they're they're similar to brawlers. Mm. Mm. So so even though you were um, performing at a really high level within judo, you you found that there weren't so many opportunities to to travel overseas and. And if, if you were fortunate enough to travel overseas, there certainly wasn't any platters of meat involved. Um, so, uh, uh, so, so you found in, in Sambo, it seems like a really well-funded organisation that's giving great opportunities to their athletes. They do. They're, they're, they're very um, supportive and they help you out a lot. So it's a, it is a, they look after you very well. So, so as an athlete, did you have any uh, out-of-pocket expenses when, when travelling? Um when because you, you seemingly get sent around the world a few times a year yeah there's a few competitions obviously you go to whatever you can i work full time as well so it's depending on and multiple competitions where you go and where you're at and what points you want some of money like there's some prize money some not prize money some um qualifying events you need to go to some not so you pick whatever you really want to or need to for your specific goal i suppose mm-hmm. but um they are they do like if you get luckily i feel like now that with this silver medal they kind of put their eyes on australia now too like i brought the first medal to australia Mm. and um i felt like my performance was um quite entertaining i suppose Mm -hmm. so they they have invited me to these different kind of competitions and um hopefully it'll keep coming that's brilliant And, and were you australia's sole representative at the games uh no there was there was there was another one there was someone else as well in a lighter division uh-huh yeah yeah but cool. in my way division, yes of course 
So uh, are there plenty of opportunities for athletes that maybe like yourself are looking to transition out of uh, their original sport and experiment with something else where there might be those opportunities to travel? Yeah, of course. If they There's plenty of opportunities. So just start competing, start nominating yourself for Sambo competitions. The more, the better. Yeah. And then, yeah. Mm. Now you're, nationals. It, has there been any further thought to you perhaps returning to the cage anytime soon and taking up that MMA career? 100%. percent i would like to. I'd like to actually speak this about DFC. Me. I'd like to fight yeah. back on DFC, hopefully for a belt. I've, everyone's getting all these belts around me. I'm getting jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to fight for the belt. I'm, I'm getting getting older, I suppose. Yeah. All these young 20-year-olds coming up. <laughs> um, I can, I'm sure I can... Um, I'm sure there's a bit. I, I still see them. I watch them. I, I still. I feel like I still belong on the top there. So, I want yeah. to fight for a belt. Fantastic. Fantastic. Belts, cool. actually. That might be a, a like combat exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. I got hundreds of medals now. I want belts. Voice there when you you started. You're like, oh yes, uh, I want to get back in the cage. So, well, you, that, that's a definite a flyer you've got there. <laughs> and, and do you feel like Sambo is better prepared you for that return to the cage? Yeah, well, it's basic. I feel like it's it's um. I go into a combat sambo fight because they got sports sambo and combat sambo, but I'm more focused now because of the cage with combat sambo, mm -hmm. and I go in prepared like similar to a cage fight. So, yeah, need striking, wrestling, everything is the same. So, yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm 100 keen for more MMA fights as well. Mm -hmm. Which which weight class are you, would you be in? At the moment, because. Uh, Probably middleweight. Okay, middleweight. Probably middleweight. Yeah. But I've, I've even considered maybe welterweight. Yeah, but, um, right. At the moment, probably middleweight and maybe later on, I'll, I'll um, welterweight as well. Have mm. two division, two belts. Yeah, That's two belts. Now. <laughs> Straight away, he's <laughs> not only going back, he's going back to dominate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. So, uh, so Sebastian, what, what's next on your calendar? Um. Tomorrow, actually, there's a competition state titles. Queensland state titles will be held here in Cairns. So, so that will be a big know. opportunity for <laughs> anyone who wants to compete as well. So they yeah. have um, Beach Sambo on Saturday here in Cairns. And on Sunday, they have the combat and sport. So, so that will be Sambo's festival <laughs> there in, in Cairns Basically, over the weekend. We're all in one. Fantastic. So somebody who, uh, who happens to be at the far north there of Queensland or, or can get there over the weekend, there's some Sambo action waiting for you, both on the beaches and yeah. – uh, It'll be right on the, on the Esplanade too, so it'll be, it'll be um, – hopefully it'll be a great car out too. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. And how's the sport going just generally? Are you starting to feel that it's getting out there more and more and you're seeing more people turn up at these competitions? Yeah, I've definitely get more interest. People asking me some old judo friends as well, and mm. other people from here, even from BJJ and other people I train with that um, uh, they they're very interested in it, and um, it is growing through judo as well and within the judo club, transitioning into sambo. So, so it's going good. Yeah, with uh, with the beach sambo, the difference in tactics between obviously you combat where you've it's almost an MMA fight. It's very close to that. And then the sport side of it. But with the beach side, we were talking about this just before, um, is that, you know, it's something almost anybody can do and go in and it looks like a whole bunch of fun, really, because it's uh, the idea is that it's, there's no striking. It's just you just got to get somebody to touch the ground or touch the sand with anything but their feet, ah. which, you know, just sounds like a just like, a, a great time, really. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like what you and I might do just here in the studio right. before we go on air. <laughs> <Just like> touch it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's what it's all about. Like it's all about farming games. So no, no one there to get injured or to kill anyone else. Like it's all, all everyone's friendly with each other. We're all brothers. Win, lose doesn't matter. So it's not a life or death scenario. So mm. everyone's everyone is welcome to join and try any any part of it so what what does it look like um for somebody who's coming from the combat side of the sambo into a beach sambo round is it just instant straight takedown like it's just grab hold of them, throw them on the ground is it you're still wearing the gi and and the shorts or is it you've got like yeah it's similar but it's basically the, the top is the same and then um 
you wear, I think, a, like basic, very similar, very similar outfit. Yeah, right. shorts and top, and then just re- basically wrestling to the ground. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a <laughs> so it's, it's like, a fun, fun, fun little game, I suppose. Not yeah. even fight. Mm, well, that'd be great. I'd love to see that. That'd be awesome. So anyone who is up in Cairns, check that out. That's going to happen over the weekend. Absolutely. Whereabouts in Cairns is it happening? Uh, the beach Hamburg will be on the Esplanade where the volleyball courts are. So it'll be in a big um, sand area right on the SP. Mm-hmm. And then um, the wrestling and, and the combat and the sport will be at Yorkie's Knob in the judo okay. hall. Very, very cool. Fantastic. And and you were mentioning off air just before you, you've kind of encountered a bit of an injury there as a result of uh, uh, your recent trip to Kazakhstan. Um, there was two two parts of it, yeah, at the injury, at the competition and at work as well. But uh, the my ligament, it's kind of got a specific, it's quite long, I don't even know. But one of my ligaments torn and it's inflammated my elbow and because of that, it's playing up with my bone or something's damaging my bone. Yeah. So um, I'm booked. Well, I've got a consultation with a surgeon and see see what they need first. Mm. If um, what's happening with it at the moment, but yeah, the the did an MRI and it's a lot worse than expected. So uh, we'll see. Was that in the, the initial injury? Was in one of the matches? Was it in the final? Or I honestly don't know. I oh. Honestly, don't know. I didn't really feel anything after the fight or nothing hmm. so right and then and then hurting again at, at work to make make things uh <laughs> double as bad yeah well i don't know if it, that was like I, I after the fight i just try to ignore it like nothing really happened and then at, at work it was like it got a lot worse and then oh i should check this out uh. Yeah, well, mm. hopefully there's good news from the surgeon and it's a very simple thing that they, oh, no, it'll fix itself. You just yeah. <laughs> That's what I work. thought. Like, yeah, like a few weeks off back in the day would have been like two days recovery and then back on the mats. But <laughs> <laughs> no, That's maybe how time. you got the injury in the first yeah. place. <laughs> That's what the average athlete's career is like, 22 years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they can just backfill it with some concrete and just, you know, just so... When you get back into where the MMA cage, you've got a little bit of extra something <laughs> yeah. in there for your opponent. Bit of oil, and they will do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you were mentioning before, like you you still feel like you've got a few years left. You're one of the more mature fighters now. You've kind of come up in a, in a time where the sport's really been growing, and and now you you're kind of coming out and, and not just uh, being a, a fine representative of MMA, but very much now the ambassador for Sambo in the country as well. Um, do do you feel like you're the elder statesman? Of combat sports now, or and and how does it feel, kind of being that guy that started when the sport was a little bit obscure to now, kind of being uh, one of the guys that's at the top of the field. Uh, I've, I've I'll always like to train. Like it's not I'm very competitive, so the age age doesn't really matter to me. So even if my body holds up, I'll be competing later on as well. So. Mm-hmm. I don't and really how old are you now? Older. I'm 33, so yeah. I'm not and the so oldest. You've... I don't. I don't consider myself as the oldest. I've seen a, a few older, very yeah, successful. They, they are limping. Well, those guys, aren't they? Yeah. That's because that's because Sebastian <laughs> just threw them on their head. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for you, you're not thinking, "Oh, look, I, I'm, I'll give it another three years." You're just thinking, "I'm just going to ride the wheels off it. I'm going to go for as long as the body still feels good and fresh. I'm going to keep turning up." Yeah, well, since I was six, I, I, I've been training since I was six and competing since I was nine. That's all I've known. I don't yeah. even know how to not not train for a competitive fight or sport or anything like that. So, and and apart from your elbows, do you still feel like you're in the shape of your life? Everything else is fine. Yeah, I've yeah. trained all year round, so I don't specifically. Well, I do training camps or fight before fights, but I train all year round, so it's not. I actually feel guilty not training, so I don't train. I was like, "Fuck, I need to do something." Yeah, to walk the dogs or anything, but uh, I I can't not train. Like I just feel bad. Yeah, <laughs> other people, all these young kids are training. 
yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially if you if you're looking at that potentially doing an MMA career as well on top of everything else, it's like, oh, maybe this is the area I want to be pushing into. So, mm. Yes, we had uh, Shane Mitchell on the show yesterday, who yeah. who's, uh, just recently competed in PFL, and he was. Yeah, I, saw. Uh, I think he's vacated a couple of those belts that you might be looking for yeah, actually at the right. DFC, so he won't be back. So, mm. yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm lucky. Happy to take it or fight him. Doesn't matter. Whichever. <laughs> uh, who is the winner weight uh, champ in DFC at the moment? Uh, I think it was uh, Shane. Yeah. Um, and uh, But he's vacated the belts. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to remember. Time. They had a, uh, um, a middleweight well, for the, the last event. They had uh, a middleweight. Was, was, was that middleweight or was weight? I can't remember. Who was? Uh, no, lightweight. Lightweight. Oh, oh, light. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. so that was Tim Rogers, the right, yeah, DFC yeah. professional lightweight champion. Yes, yes. there you go. Yeah. Mm. That doesn't help at all. No, you can't have that one. <laughs> Tim's got that one. Uh, you'd have to lose a lot of weight as yeah. well. So uh, <laughs> he's only just won it, so I think he's pretty fond of it. So, yeah. <laughs> But there's plenty of others there waiting for you, Seb. So, uh, well, well, thanks so much again for joining us on the podcast. And it's, thanks, it's always great me. having you, mate. And, and wonderful to follow your success and see you representing our country so well on the international stage and um mate i hope next time you get a chance to stay on in kazakhstan eat more of that meat um <laughs> and uh and really enjoy and um and and thank you so much for uh, letting in letting us into your world and uh get, giving some insights into the the life and times of sambo champion yeah thank you very much for having me there's a few more coming up so we'll and- hopefully be back on the show a few times Absolutely, yeah. mate. We love having you back, and we uh, we we love tracking your success, and uh, love seeing what's going on in the world of Sambo. And if you if you are curious about Sambo, and and just like Seb, you might be in another discipline already, or you you might be just looking to up your skill set, and you see that uh, maybe combat Sambo is one of the ways to go, or maybe you're just looking to keep fit, and so maybe even just beach Sambo might be your thing. Well, uh, there are Sambo Federation uh, uh, officers throughout the country. Every state has a has as a place where you can train and you can um, of course go to national competitions uh, much as and you'd see Sebastian there of course but the um, the reality is is that uh, Sambo is really growing in Australia right now they've got a great organization and they're providing awesome opportunities for athletes to uh, uh, to travel abroad and to test their skills against the best in the world so uh, um, our suggestion to you if you're looking at uh, building on that extra uh, discipline then Sambo could well be a wonderful pathway for you and just as it has been for Sebastian. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sebastian Semesi, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and wishing you ongoing success, mate. All the best with the elbow and we'll look forward to seeing you in a DFC cage or uh, and the results, of course, of the uh, Sambo Championships there in Cairns this weekend. We'll do. We'll definitely do. Hopefully sooner than later too. Great, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, All right. Thanks, guys. Take Cheers, care. Sebastian, and See thank you. you for you at home. We'll look forward to bringing you more of the Daily Combat podcast next time.